Well, I'm delighted to be here today. I've just got a little presentation. If you ever get to travel again, make sure you go to a little place in France called Strasbourg. And just next to the Ubiot Cathedral there is one of the extraordinary museums that they have all around the world. And in it, you'll find this little stained glass. It's a very mesmerizing image, isn't it? Have a look at it for a while. It looks a bit dour, doesn't it? But it's the first recorded image of Jesus in stained glass. It's very vivid, some of the colors, but very stark as well. Over the last 10 years or so, we've been invited to look on the face of Christ. And what's distinctive about us humans is exactly that, isn't it? Our face. And in all of the debates we're doing at the moment, what do we often forget? That it's actually about people. Before it's about systems, before it's about anything else, it's about people. So that's the first point. Now, I was visiting a family the other day, and they had their Apple TV going, uh, Apple TV, sorry, uh, going, and they were watching this particular movie. I haven't seen it, but I thought, well, it's actually not a bad little, um, has anyone seen it at all? Um, you may not like uh, Billy Eilish, is it, with the green hair? Um, but the title struck me. The world's a little blurry. And I think uh, a lot of people are sort of uh, finding that at the moment, aren't they? It's sort of hard to bring things into focus. And that's okay. But days like today actually help to sharpen the focus a little bit and put a little bit of perspective on it for us. So, every wheel has a hub. Nothing new there. So I'd like to suggest that when you look through Pope Francis and all that we're doing today, there's one word that I'd simply like to leave you with. And this talk today is brought to you by the word care. Now that's the hub to which Pope Francis is calling us in all of those different documents. Because you'd think it'd be a natural thing for us humans to do, wouldn't it? To actually care for each other. But as good students of history, you actually know that we aren't always very good at doing that. But when we are our best, and when we, our lives are informed by faith, we actually are very good at doing that. The two hands power of the cross. <coughs> so I'd like to suggest that C stands for connected. And if you read all of those documents and all of the stuff and what you're trying to do today is you're trying to be connected because no one actually likes being disconnected. That's when the world becomes more than a little blurry. And sometimes it's not our fault. Sometimes we inherit a real disconnection. Now, actually, as people of faith, we've got another funny word that starts with C that talks about connected being communion. It's one of the words we use in our faith business all the time because that's actually what life's about, entering into a communion with God with our neighbour, with our best self. And as Pope Francis keeps reminding us, he's been reading St Paul, I know, the whole of creation. Nothing is actually out of that gambit. So we are connected. And so A can stand for awareness. You can put in any of those other things. And of course, with C, I'd also put Christ, of course, but awareness. 
What are you doing today? What are you tuning into? There's so many things to tune into. There's so many different TV shows, series, uh, music, uh, whatever it might be. But that all helps to form us, doesn't it? And to make us aware. So the A in care is to be aware. And part of today is to think about, well, actually, what messages am I tuning into? Because there's all sorts of competing voices. I mean, if you go to the supermarket, there's 42 different varieties of balsamic vinegar, for goodness sake. How on earth do we choose the big things? But if we don't ask the question, we can just float along. But the big question is, what am I tuning into? And that's what you've been trying to do today. Fine tuning. Back in the good old days, we used to have radios. You probably have heard of those. Mm -hmm. But they had big tuning knobs and uh, you had to actually very carefully sometimes make sure you're on the right frequency. I know I'm talking about something very old, but anyway. And of course, we can't just be aware. <clears throat> That's great. But actually awareness changes us, and so we have to respond, but reflectively. Because if we just respond without being reflective, we react. And actually, our world is full of reactionary. But if we respond reflectively, actually it comes from a deeper place. And actually, it lasts a lot longer. It is a deeper change as well, but you see, it comes from being connected, it comes from being aware, and are we respond? And so, that includes everyone. It's not just anything. Now, over here, you've heard of Lent, that happens just before Easter, which we finish on Sunday. I've been reading this book. It's Pope Francis's, says, The Path to a Better Future. But it's his reflections on COVID. What do we learn from it? What's the pathway out of it? And there's nothing new in here in one way. But it's funny how we forget sometimes what's important. So <clears throat> what he says is, we're in it together. And so we can forget that. We do need prophetic voices to sort of uh, lead us out there and uh, point in the right direction. But if everyone doesn't come along, then we don't get terribly far. So Pope Francis has come up with uh, a couple of, have you remember the Beatitudes in uh, Matthew's Gospel, blessed are the poor in spirit. Well, he's come up with some six new Beatitudes, which I'd like to call Butte Attitudes, that underpin some of all that we're trying to do. We can't just care for creation, yes we can, without recognizing that there's a creator We've got to attend to both of those. So he says, Blessed are those who remain faithful while enduring evils inflicted on them by others and forgive them from their heart. There's a whole section there on forgiveness, which is one of the characteristics of the disciples of Christ. <coughs> Blessed are those who look into the eyes of the abandoned and marginalized and show them their closeness. Often we don't see, we don't tune into. But to look someone in the eye, as we remember that first line from Strasbourg, that mesmerizing image of Christ, it invites us to look into the eyes. Blessed are those who see God in every person and strive to make others discover Him. That can be, uh, 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 nowhere does it say this is easy, by the way. 
I say that is good. Blessed are those who protect and care for our common home. See the word care there? And uh, care is not far from common as well. Blessed are those who renounce their own comfort in order to help others. That's a bit challenging because it means we have to change and this are those who pray and work for full communion between Christians. That's another dimension because it's about connection and communion. That's actually a deep impulse in the human person that you're responding to today. And all of these things we're reflecting on, it's about wanting to be connected, about being in communion. So I just want to finish uh, with this little prayer and then maybe you've got some comments you can tell me about what you've been doing um, and uh, any questions or comments. So I'd like you to pray this together. Uh, okay, we don't have keep, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, let's pray this one. All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace them with your tenderness, all that exist. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not crown it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite life. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love and peace. Amen. So, of course, that from Laudato Si. Now, I've been talking at you unrestrainedly for several minutes. Um, 